Jennifer shares this. Jennifer, thank you for sharing this. This kind of connects to, you know, what we're talking about with fossil fuels. And uh, keep in mind, pollution can be traced back to capitalism for quite a long time now. They go hand in hand. And here's something that's going on right in Michigan. And this isn't in Flint necessarily, where they don't have clean drinking water. There's more than just um, a crumbling water infrastructure in Michigan. There's a lot more going on. And Jennifer shares this. Here's a peek inside um, Michigan's most toxic zip code. Struggling to breathe in 48217, which is Michigan's most toxic zip code. Carmen Garrison avoids the outdoors because she's certain the air is poisoning her. As a kid, she often threw up and had a headache after walking to school in Southwest Detroit. More than three decades later, her eyes burn, her throat hurts, and her nose runs if she takes even a short stroll down the road. Why is that? Well, because she's among more than 7,000 people who live in 48217, the most polluted zip code in Michigan. The community is inundated with a toxic slew of chemicals wafting from steel mills, coal-fired power plants, gas flares, billowing smokestacks, towering piles of coal and petroleum coke, a salt mine, wastewater treatment plant, and one of the nation's largest oil refineries. And a guy named Merle who farts too much. All those things. <laughs> no, look, I mean, look at that list. Yeah, I mean, that's insane. Steel mills, coal fire, they have it all. It's all in this neighborhood. And where is it? Is it is it off the beaten path where there aren't people? No, it's right in the middle of everything. All looming over schools, neighborhoods, parks, senior centers, and a recreation center. A nauseating stench of rotten eggs, burnt plastic, and gasoline permeates the air. Heavy-duty trucks spewing harmful emissions rumble to and from factories all day and night, often carrying toxic chemicals and debris. And, you know, I know for a fact this stuff is real because I, when we were in Houston with the Progressive Comedy Tour, Grandma Wood and myself were in Houston and uh, a couple people from the local community radio station there, they had us on the air and they uh, gave us a few ideas of local things to go cover. And one of them was this park in Houston and it's a park for kids where there are these just big oil um, oil and plastic manufacturers right in the middle of it. The air is completely toxic. And there's this park. And then there's just these refineries on either side. And then there's a couple residential houses right near it as well. Why? Because these people couldn't afford to move. And they weren't willing to give up their property. So the companies just said, well, screw you. We'll build right in your backyard. And that's what they did. And the people are stuck there. Their property value, I'm sure, has plummeted. And they're breathing in poison every day. And it was to the point where there's a mural that the kids drew, the kids in the area drew, where they have these smokestacks and these pollutions going on while they're playing in the park. They drew that because they just know that and accept that as their normal. That yeah, your park has all this all this poison around you, and that's going into their developing lungs. And it's the same thing happening in Detroit. And how severe is it? People get runny noses and and nausea just from walking around their neighborhood. You're supposed to walk around in 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 a place to relieve something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's like get some fresh air. That's something that we all say. Get some fresh air. Hey, go get some fresh air. What happens when you can't get some fresh air? Hey, get some fresh air. Go inside. Go inside. Put on your, uh, you know, put on your air cleaner inside and breathe that in. That's the closest you can get to fresh air. This is happening in the United States, and it's happening because, because of all the production that they had to do in Detroit that brought the environment to its knees. And now we're at a point in our technology and in our populace where we have a way to reinvent our energy. But instead, they still have this at the cost of this neighborhood. I mean, isn't that incredible? And I'm sure there's neighborhoods like this all across the country. I mean, again, I was at the one in Houston. And here's the one in Michigan. 48217. Again, this is in schools, parks. Neighborhoods, senior centers, a recreation center. What all do they have there? Steel mills, coal-fired plants, gas flares, billowing smokestacks, towering piles of coal and petroleum coke, a salt mine, wastewater treatment plant, and one of the nation's largest oil refineries. 
all in one neighborhood. All in one neighborhood. They probably can't even have a neighborhood block party once a year because it's probably it, it's probably too toxic to be out there. Hey, I, I can't come to the block party. I get nauseous too easy from being outside because of all the all the toxic shit in our neighborhood. Richest country in the world. Richest country in the world. And Detroit, Michigan, a city that once led in the production of, of cars that led in manufacturing that has done so much culturally for this country. I mean, I, I, you, you think about Motown, you think about uh, just all the great culture and music that has come out of Detroit. And a lot of it is still there. Detroit still is in so many ways, uh, such a huge cultural hub to this country and such a very special place because there's a lot of people who did not give up on the spirit of Detroit, who stayed there and who are still trying to do amazing things in their neighborhood. And they're trying to do urban gardening and they're trying to revamp the city and they're trying to rebuild places like this, but they have a long way to go and they have a lot of work to do. And they're up against the big behemoth that is corporate America. I'm with you, Detroit. I've been a fan for a long time and I still am. And uh, I can't wait to see you on May 15th. We'll be in Detroit May 15th, by the way. Um, so thank you for sharing that, uh, Jennifer. Thank you very much for sharing that. It's important to highlight that when it's going on in different communities. And again, I mean, I, I know there's stuff going on in communities that I don't even know about. I know it's a thing. Um, you know, it really makes you take a step back and be like, wow, that's happening right in the United States. And I'm, I'm glad we can give uh, some coverage to it on this show. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you wanna know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your 